Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a thriller, sci-fi film from 2021, titled Settlers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's an ordinary day on Mars. From a space base, Ilsa, Reza and their daughter Remy see the stars in the sky. She spots one in particular, bigger and brighter than any other. She knows it's not a moon, so deduces it's the Earth, thousands of miles away from them. The family spends their days doing manual labor in the base, trying to survive the planet's arid environment with few resources, but with the facility of having terraformed at least a portion of the region, which allows them to walk freely in the open. A time cut shows Ilsa calling Remy, who was running away to look for her lost father in the vastness of the horizon. A few hours later, Remy and her mother have a math class but are interrupted by the sudden appearance of Reza, who looks agitated after his reconnaissance trip. Still, he goes to wish a happy night to his daughter, who knows that her suspicions of strangers nearby are real. Reza tries to calm her down by telling her that they are the only humans on the planet, but the girl doubts his words. At a late-night family meeting, Remy asks her father if he has ever seen animals, along with the reasons why they went all the way to Mars. Reza just says that he haven't seen any animals, that Earth isn't like it used to be and that someday, the red planet will be just as good as their former home. The following day, Remy senses something in the distance, so she jumps up and goes to the living room to find leave written in red paint on the windows. Her parents find out in panic, with Reza even pulling out a gun in case he needs to defend themselves. Somehow, they spot at least three individuals somewhere pretending to be six, but are unable to see them. They spend the rest of the afternoon cautiously, anxious to know if their barnyard pigs are okay. Moved by uncertainty, Remy decides to inspect, finding an unprotected piglet, their only living creature so far. Ilsa notices this, and when she calls her daughter out, a couple of strangers appear at full speed wanting to take the girl, but Reza manages to intercept them, shooting them head-on to save his kid. Just as another of the enemies was about to take Remy, Ilsa arrives at her rescue, attacking the stranger until she is unable to stand up. Everyone runs for cover as the bandits start shooting from afar. The girls manage to get inside, and with Ilsa's help, Reza fires a shot at the last enemy, wounding him in the leg. The father leaves them to inspect while the mother investigates the bodies with the girl. It is perhaps the first time Remy sees another human being other than her parents, and to her bad luck, it ends up being a dead body. They wait for Reza until dawn, fearful that some stranger would have attacked him far from there. They even hear some firing at some point, fearing the worst. After a spontaneous trip to the bathroom the lights go out, and they remain in darkness for the rest of the night. Upon awakening, Ilsa arms herself with a machete to inspect, but she and Remy are surprised by a wounded man who breaks into their home. It's the same man from yesterday, who claims that the family does not belong there, as the place originally belonged to his parents before they took it from them. After many years and several difficulties, the man is able to regain his home and allows Ilsa and her daughter to stay under the condition of not making any trouble. On the contrary, he will deal with Ilsa, leaving her daughter alone with him. However, they reject the proposal, fleeing and taking refuge near the central base. Ilsa takes the opportunity to enter once the man goes off guard, taking the first thing she can in the kitchen to ambush him. Upon entering, the man realizes Ilsa's plan, so he subdues her, receiving a new wound in the leg. He asks her to give him 30 days off from assassination attempts, as he has big plans for the station. He actually wants to reactivate and bring out the true potential of the place for a better living not only for him, but for the girls. The only condition Ilsa asks of him is a proper burial for Reza, clarifying his death. He gives them so, burying Reza in a nearby mountain next to the man's former comrades. It is then that they begin to live with the mysterious man, who is still suspicious of Ilsa and her daughter. Even so, Remy keeps an eye on the man, who possesses a vast array of weaponry, and when she has the opportunity to go through his things in secret, she finds a drawing of a woman, the same one her mother fought to protect her the day before. She takes the drawing and keeps it for herself. In the evening, the man tells Ilsa that he has made improvements to the station and that now they can even have the faucet system working, something they previously hadn't. Not only that, but the next day, a little box-shaped robot starts working, which Remy takes a liking to and names it Steve, making it her first mascot and friend. After dinner, the man introduces himself to Ilsa as Jerry, starting a conversation to build trust. In turn, she tells him that they were taken into the place by her father initially, rather than having taken it by force. However, Jerry's father rejected them when he learned they were from Earth, so they had to defend themselves. Still, they were responsible for Jerry's mother's exile, so he still has some resentment towards them. There is tension on the base the following days, even if they are no longer trying to attack each other. Jerry asks Remy if she took his drawing, but she denies it. Knowing this is a lie, the man lets her have it, as she treats it as a treasure. Gradually, a physical attraction develops between Ilsa and Jerry, something Remy notices and, moved by discomfort, decides to leave the station on her own, not even letting Steve follow her. 
Her plans are cut short when she reaches some kind of force field that serves as a barrier that marks the limit of the habitable perimeter, something that makes Remy obfuscate, and she ends up giving up her plans. However, she comes across a giant door that leads to a dark corridor. Not knowing what she might find there, Remy enters, and already a few meters in, the door closes behind her. She moves forward with the help of a flashlight ball, but when a light at the end of the tunnel appears in the distance, Remy faints over the pressure and the lack of oxygen. She is rescued by Jerry and wakes up in her bed next to her mother back at home base. Jerry and Remy converse, and he tells her that there is nothing but rocks and dust beyond the barrier. He says he came from the war and that little by little, the artificial atmosphere they created is leaking out into space and that the sooner she accepts it, the better it will be for her. Remy marks the days with dust in a mirror, passing a month since she lost her father, her mother tries to comfort her, but it doesn't seem to have much effect. The next day, Jerry finds a guitar, and asks Ilsa to play a song. Out of sadness, Remy goes to the greenhouse when she hears her mother sing. In there, she confesses to her mother that she hates her for faking everything is okay. In the kitchen, Jerry ditches his gun, giving Ilsa the chance to go against him. However, she later discovers that there are no bullets in the gun, so it is useless, so she decides to go and grab something else sharp to protect her daughter. Inside, the two adults struggle out of sight of the girl, but when Jerry gets out badly wounded, Remy fears the worst, running away. Jerry intercepts her and asks her to stay with him, but to wait until it is safe for her to enter the base, so she won't find her mom's body. Ilsa is buried on the same mountain as Reza and the other humans, leaving only her daughter at the mercy of Jerry, who promises not to hurt her. Years pass, and now the two live together in relative harmony, improving the central base and the surrounding area to the point of having more pigs, chickens, and vegetables and bringing vegetation to various parts of the territory. A young adult Remy meets Jerry at an artificial pond, and he urges her to give it a try, leaving her alone. She does so at night, diving in for the first time, and after sharing some alcohol with Jerry, they return to the house so that Jerry can surprise her with a gift. It was a drawing of her mother, which Jerry made waiting for Remy to grow up a little more to not lose details. The girl ends up crying, being consoled by Jerry. However, he takes advantage of the situation and kisses her, causing her rejection. Now the atmosphere between the two becomes tenser. Jerry wants to get closer to initiate a possible repopulation that he believes it's absolutely necessary, but Remy flatly refuses the idea, not caring if they are the last human beings in the universe. The two argue, and Jerry asks her to reconsider his proposal. Steve tries to cheer Remy up with a ball game, but she refuses to participate and goes to her room. Thinking to be safe, she finds Jerry inside, holding Remy's oxygen mask, which she would use to escape the barrier eventually. Jerry gets angry and leaves with the mask, but Remy tries to take it back so she can go outside and see the truth by herself, even if Jerry tells her there is no one else out there. The two struggle and Jerry makes her fall to accidentally smash her head on the floor with a valve. Jerry is shocked to see that the only one who witnessed the event was Steve the robot. Waking up with a wound on her head, Remy realizes that she is tied up, with Jerry on top of her. He tries to calm the situation, but the girl despairs. He tells her that there is still hope for humanity, but it causes the opposite effect on the girl, who hyperventilates and starts struggling on the bed. Jerry apologizes, saying that he doesn't like doing those kinds of things either and that everyone else is forcing him to act in order to survive. The desperation reaches such a point that Jerry is forced to threatening her if she doesn't calm down. While the girl becomes even more desperate, at least she remains quiet from now on, fearful of what might happen. Just as Jerry is about to proceed, he is shot by Steve, who comes to the girl's rescue. Jerry is seriously wounded in the neck, and instead of staying with Remy, he prefers to approach the robot and shoot it to destruction. Remy manages to free himself and flees while Jerry struggles in the kitchen. He sees through the reflection of the window the girl aiming at him. He tries to save himself by telling her that she needs him as much as he needs her, but Remy disagrees. Jerry was about to take his gun to defend himself but preferred to cease because of the genuine fondness he had for the girl. Remy manages a direct headshot, leaving her alone not only on the base but also in the entire territory. All she can do is sit and cry all night long. She buries Jerry's body in the mountain, making her the last survivor in the base, and the only living thing aside the plants and the few animals. She takes a shower and surveys the area, knowing that no one else will appear. She manages to reactivate her robot friend, but it's not enough to bring Steve back to her side. Remy spends her days alone, watching the animals and subsisting by her own. Still, she becomes sedentary, careless, and sluggish, believing she has been touched by her mother in her sleep. She also begins to have visions of Jerry prowling the base, concluding with screaming at the top of her lungs in case anyone else could hear her. Her only company is the tiny earth in the distance, wondering if there are other people there. Still, she persists in repairing Steve and after many attempts, manages to get him functional again to say goodbye for her next voyage. The machine is saddened to lose its friend, and Remy goes to farewell all the deceased on the mountain one last time. 
Her last vision of her home is Steve taking care of the pigs, and then she sets out to march to the cave entrance. Remy moves forward, wearing her mask that provides her with oxygen on her walking, and makes it through to the other side as if nothing had happened. She is both excited and nervous of seeing the great beyond, and to her surprise, she sees only miles and miles of wasteland, completely booked for her to explore. There aren't any human civilizations on the horizon, just dirt and sand. She feels something behind her, and the girl sees the tunnel gates close behind her, alone in the massiveness of the red planet. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.